Join Press Box in the Stoley Touchdown Zone at the corner of Sharp and Austin Streets before every Ravens home game. Go to PressBoxOnline.com now for complete details. A good friend of mine, local writer and baseball enthusiast, Charlie Vassaleros, felt a lifelong connection with Babe Ruth, and he claims to have had supernatural encounters with his spirit. Inside Press Box caught up with him recently, and he described some of his haunted experiences. Uh, during the 2001 and 2002 baseball seasons, I had the great pleasure of taking the Babe Ruth Museum's traveling exhibit on the road and we were placed in ballparks, mostly minor league ballparks, across the country for the duration of two baseball seasons, driving from one city to the next, setting up the exhibit for a weekend, and then hitting the road and driving on to the next town. It was during that time and through that experience that I kind of became haunted by Babe Ruth, perhaps visited by his ghost, I felt at times that he was along with us for the trip. I felt that all of the attention and adulation he was receiving was part of what could have conjured his spirit and brought him to us. Everywhere we went, we were telling his life story and bringing uh, the, the message of Babe to baseball fans around the country. As his trip continued, Charlie would stop to have rolls of film developed along the way. It was once he began looking at the photos that he noticed something very strange. This is where this is where the real ghost story comes in, and and uh, what what started to make a believer out of me. I was chronicling our journey. I was taking 20, 30 pictures a day everywhere we went. A few times I got some pictures back that really uh, made me wonder what was going on. We had done a spring training tour in Arizona. We were out there for six weeks. On the last day of the trip, we're at uh, Tempe Diablo Stadium. The former owner of the California Angels was. Gene Autry, Anaheim Angels, Los Angeles Angels, all the different incarnations of the Angels. And uh, they had a bronze bust of Gene Autry. And I thought, well, let's get the babe together. We had our own life-size cutout of the babe. I said, let's get babe and Gene Autry together and pose for this picture. And I took a picture and lo and behold, when I got the film back, there were glowing orbs right over the faces of each of them. Not somewhere in the picture, the faces of each of them one on the babe's face made this two-dimensional photograph look almost three-dimensional. It was as if the, his whole countenance had changed. Uh, uh, the expression on his, on his face almost seemed slightly altered. He seemed to be really peering through the orb at me. During the duration of, the next, of that trip and the next one in 2002, the ghost would show up. These orbs would show up in pictures at the most appropriate and opportune times we made a visit to Sudbury, Massachusetts, where the babe kept a winter home and used to go ice fishing out on this pond. There was this story about a piano in his house that he had perhaps taken out on the ice one night and it sunk. The people in Sudbury were hoping to rescue this piano as a means of removing the curse of the Bambino from the Red Sox. This was an actual news story appearing in papers like the Washington Post and the New York Times while we're traveling. As we were passing through Sudbury, I thought I'd give these people a call and maybe they could show me Willis Pond where they thought the, the piano was in the lake. And uh, you know, we went there and they took us to the couple of places where Babe lived as well. And uh, as I was leaving and thanking the people, I took a picture of their office and above the doorway to their office was the orb again. We were in Pittsburgh a few months later and they have these bronze statues of the great pirates out there, one of them being Willie Stargell, a Ruthian type figure in Pittsburgh, and uh, the orb showed up on Stargell's face. I, I like to think that that's actually the ghost of the babe recognizing Willie Stargell. I don't know, it could be Willie Stargell's ghost, but either way it looks like a ghost to me. We visited the cemetery where Babe Ruth is buried uh, in upstate New York and got out took a headstone rubbing, left some offerings. I happened to have a Cuban cigar, which the babe would have loved. I left it on his grave. Um, I had a flask with some whiskey in it, and I took a belt and poured one in the ground for the babe. And I uh, took some pictures of the headstone, and sure enough, the orb shows up. And in this case, not even just one orb. His wife is also buried there. His second wife, uh, was, Claire, was buried there as well. And two orbs show up. 
and then they're moving around. I took a series of pictures where you can see the orbs going from one spot to the next, where there's this kind of, I guess you call it paranormal activity going on around the gravesite. And again, seemed very appropriate. Uh, in Milwaukee, three construction workers died during the making of Miller Park. They are commemorated with a plaque outside of the ballpark. There's a light shining from the corner of the photograph onto that plaque, the three guys who died. And I have one picture of a player in New Orleans holding Babe Ruth's bat in his hand. And he looks like he just, like Lancelot, pulling the sword out of the stone. He's holding the bat and the orb is right up on the top of the bat. And he's looking at it, but I don't think you could actually have seen it in real life. It only seemed to have shown up in the photograph. So see, these are the, the, the photographic, uh, uh, what I would call evidence of, of Babe Ruth's ghost being out on the road with us. But Charlie's experience doesn't end there. Later at the trip, this has come August, almost September, the minor league season is winding to an end, and I'm going out to my furthest point west with the exhibit, Salt Lake City. The previous night I was in Denver, Colorado, so I'm driving from Denver to Salt Lake, and on this long drive, late at night, 10 o'clock at night, on a, side of, uh, on, a, on a very desolate Route 40 in Utah, somebody pulled up next to the truck. I hadn't seen any traffic in hours, and made a motion that I should look at the back. Well, I was pretty frightened. I pulled over to see what had happened, and sure enough, the door uh, of the back door on the truck had opened up. Well, my, I almost had a heart attack because that's where I kept Babe Ruth's stuff. This bat over here in the corner was in a box, and uh, in my mind's eye, I had imagined the bat falling out of the back of the truck and a big semi truck running it over and breaking it in half. This is what I thought the worst case scenario could be. Fortunately for me, I don't know how long the back door had been open, but uh, this angel, which, which I'll call this person an angel, who came by and told me to open the door, uh, got me in time. And uh, I immediately, when I realized I had everything still intact, I just looked up to the sky and thanked the Bambino himself for sending that angel to save me. I show th those photographs to people all the time, and I get about a 50-50 response on them. Uh, I'd say about half the people believe that that is actually Babe Ruth's ghost in those pictures and about half don't. Uh, I think it's more fun if you believe. I also think believing actually makes it real. Uh, it seems like it has for me. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, Baltimore is an old haunted town. I'm sure I'm not the only one with stories like this. I would imagine uh, uh, that the Babe's spirit is present often and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if other people had similar ghost stories to tell. And our thanks to our Dave Lashley there. I'm not sure which side of the 50-50. I'd love to see uh, Charlie get another lens on that camera, but I'm not a non-believer either. And you can see more with Charlie at PressBoxOnline.com as he visits some local Babe Ruth haunts. We'll wrap things up with the photo of the week right after this. Glen Burnie Transmissions is now celebrating its 50th year of providing Maryland residents with the very best in transmission services and repairs. Go to GBT-Online.com. GBT is your dealer alternative.